live from Atlanta, Georgia, it's theCUBE, covering Ansible Fest 2019. Brought to you by Red Hat. Okay, welcome back everyone. It's theCUBE's live coverage of Ansible Fest here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Stu Miniman, analyst with Silicon Angle, theCUBE. Our next two guests, Tom Anderson, Ansible's product owner at Red Hat as part of the Ansible platform, automation platform they announced, and Richard Henshaw, product manager. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you. We had uh, all the execs on yesterday and some customers all pretty jazzed up about this year, mm -hmm. uh, mainly around just the timing of how automation is really hitting the scene and mm -hmm. some of the scale that's going on. Mm -hmm. You guys had big news with the Ansible automation platform. Mm -hmm. New addition to the portfolio. Mm -hmm. What's the feedback? Uh, so far, I think the feedback has been super positive. We have customers who've come to us a lot over the last little while and said, hey, we're maturing, we're moving along the automation maturity curve, right? And we have multiple teams coming to us and saying, hey, can you help us connect this other team? We've had a lot of success doing cloud provisioning or doing network automation or doing security automation, what have you. And they're coming to us and saying, help us, give us kind of the story, if you will, to be able to connect these other teams in our organization. And so that, you know, we, see, we kind of feel the pull for this thing to move from a tool that automates this or that, this task or that task, to much more of a platform-centric It view. seems to be scaling out in terms of what automation is touching these days, yeah. and if you look at the numbers, six million plus uh, activations on GitHub versus you know, other projects, mm -hmm. so activity's high in the community. But this seems to be a much more broader scope now to bring more things together. What's the rationale behind it? What's the reasoning? What's, what's the strategy? What's the plan? Well, I mean, the main thing is automation's got to that point where it's becoming the skill set that we do. So it was always the focus. So, you know, I'm a database administrator, I'm a sysadmin, I'm a middleware, I'm an app dev. And those people then would do tasks inside their job. But now we're getting to the point of, actually, I, anybody that can see a piece of technology can automate a piece of technology. And the clouds have shown this is the way to go forward with the thing, but we, how do we bring that, not just in places where it's being created from scratch and new, how do you bring that into what's existing? Because you know, a lot of our customers have 20 or 30 years of like a heritage in their IT estate. And how do you deal with all of that? You can't just rebuild everything into new as well. So you've got to be able to automate across both of those areas and try and keep, you know, we say it's administrative um, efficiency versus organizational effectiveness. You know, how do I get to the point where the organization can be effective as opposed to just doing things that make my job easier. And that's what we're trying to bring with you know, applying automation as a capability that anybody can take advantage of. Yeah, Richard, I actually felt the keynote uh, demo this morning did a nice job of that. Uh, the, the line that they set it up with is this is, this is a tool set that all the various roles and teams just get it. Yep. Um, and it's not the old traditional, okay, I do my piece and set it up and then throw it over the wall. There was that, you know, oh, I've gotten the notification and then some feedback loops and you know, we huddle for something and it gets done rather fast. It's, yeah. You know, it's not magic, it's still when I get a certain piece done, okay, I need to wait for uh, it to actually be up and running, uh, but uh, you know, you're, you're getting everybody into uh, really a, a, a enterprise collaboration yep. almost uh, with, with the tool driving uh, those activities together. And, that, and that's why yesterday I said that focus on, you know, collaboration is, is a great thing, all teams need to be able to do that to be more successful because you, know, you get more in inclusivity, you get more inputs. But you know, organizations also need to coordinate what activities they're doing because they have rules, regulations, um, structures and standards they have to apply. And you want to make sure that those people can do things in a, in a way that's guided for them so that they're, they're effective at what they're trying to do. Okay, take a minute to explain what's in the platform first because Ansible Engine and Tower are in there. What else is in there? What's new? What's, what are customers going to see that's new, that's different? Okay, so the, the new components are Automation Hub, um, there's collections, which is a technology inside Ansible itself, um, and also automation analytics. Right? And, the, and the key thing is that Engine and Tower are still the beating heart of the platform, mm -hmm. but then it's about building the body around the outside. So Automation Hub is about discoverability. It's like what can we find out? What automation can I do that I'm allowed to do? Um, analytics is about the post activity. So I've automated all these things. I've done all this work. Well, how did it go? Who did what, who did how much of what, uh, how well did it work, how much did it fail, succeed? You know, and then once you build on that, you then start to expand that into other areas. So what KPIs, how much of what I do is automated versus not automated. You can start to instigate other aspects of business change then. Uh, a bit of gamification amongst teams. Who's the, who's the, the closest and most <laughs> adherent to the strategy? Um, you know, 
an input source to how we'll costs find out what's working, right? Yeah. Essentially, and it's yeah. a sharing mechanism too for other groups yeah. in terms of knowing what's happening. Yeah, and how is my platform performing? Yeah. Which, which areas are performing well, which areas might not be performing well, and then as we move down the road, kind of how am I performing against my peers? How are other organizations that are automating using the Ansible automation platform doing? And am I keeping up, am I doing better? That kind of stuff. Yeah. So, Tom, uh, th there's, there's a robust community as we were talking yeah. about there. Um, platform feels like it, it builds on, yet does change the dynamic a little bit when you talk about uh, the automation hub and collections. Mm -hmm. uh, you've already got a, a, a long list of the ecosystem vendors that are participating here. Mm -hmm. um, bring us to, through a little bit what led to uh, you know, all of these announcements and where you expect, uh, you know, how would this change the dynamics of the community? Yeah. And maybe we'll split up that question. I'll talk a little bit about partners because it's both partners and customers and community here that's been driving us this way. I'll talk a little bit about partners and, 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 and let Rich talk about the customer piece here, which is partners have been traditionally distributing their content, their Ansible automation content, through our engine capability. So our engine release cycle or cadence has been sort of the limiting factor to how fast they can get content out to their users. And what, uh, what the collections does as part of the platform is allows us to separate those things. Uh, Rich talked about it yesterday in his keynote, having that stable platform, but yet having, yet having content be able to rev fast. And our partners love that idea because they can content, they can develop content, create content, get into their users' hands faster. So partners like F5 and Microsoft that you've seen on stage here are both huge contributors and they've been part of the pull for us to get to the platform. And then from a customer perspective, and the thing I love most about doing this job with, with regards to customers is because I was a customer, <laughs> and I was the Ansible customer, and then I came over to this side, and I now go out and see customers, I see what they've done, and I go, oh, what? that's what I wanted to do, or that's what I was trying to do. And you're starting to see those, um, the, what people are starting to achieve. And like we said yesterday, it's, it's moved away from should I automate to how do I automate more, and what should I automate? Yeah. And so we're starting to see how customers are building their capabilities, and there's, you know, there's as many different ways people do this as there are different customers. You know, what's uh, interesting is you guys have such a great success formula. First of all, congratulations. And it's great to see how this is turning into such a wider market because mm -hmm. it's not just a niche configuration management anymore. Yeah. Automation's become, with Cloud 2.0, a whole new, wider category. So con you know, congratulations. The formula we see with success is good product, yep. community, Mm -hmm. Customers adopting, and then ecosystem. Mm -hmm. That seems to be the successful form in these kinds of growth, growth waves yes. that you guys are experiencing. What is the partner angle? You mentioned S5, Microsoft, because that to me is going to be a tipping point and a tell sign for you guys because yeah. you got the community, you got the customers, mm -hmm. that's check, check, yep. ecosystem. What's the partner angle? Yep. How do they involve? Take us through that. Yep. What's going on there? So, you're absolutely right. So, you know, kind of platform velocity will be driven by partner adoption and how many things customers can automate on that platform or through that platform. And for us, I mean, the example was in the demo this morning where they went to the automation hub and they pulled down the F5 collection, plugged it into a workflow and they were automating. What our partners experience through their customers is, look, if I'm a customer, I have a, a multi-cloud environment or a hybrid cloud environment, I've got automation from AWS, I've got Azure automation, I've got VMware automation, I've got F5, I've got Cisco, I've got Palo Alto, I've got all these different automation tools to try and string them together. And the customers are coming and telling those vendors, look, we don't want to use your automation tool and this automation tool and that one. We want to use Ansible as the common substrate, if you will, automation substrate across this platform. So that's motivating the partners to come to us and say, hey, I, had, I was out at uh, F5 Aspire last week and they're all in on Ansible. I mean, it's really impressive to see just how much they're in on Ansible and, and how much they're being driven by their customers. When they do Ansible workshops with F5, they say the attendance is amazing. So they're being pulled by their customers and therefore the partners are coming to us and that's driving our platform kind of usability across the, uh, uh, across the scale. I think another angle we'll see when we talk to the engineers at the partners that are actually doing the work to work with Ansible is that they're seeing it as a, a change also in how they, you know, it's, it's no longer like an individual customer inside an individual data center. Because everything's so much more open and so much more visible, you know, there's value in them making it appealing and easy for their customers to gain advantage of what they're doing. And also the fact that then scales across those customers as well, because they have their internal teams doing the same, the same things. And so bringing them to a, an automation, you know, capability like Ansible, and then being able to push that means that they also gain some, the, the customer's appreciation for them making it easier to do their task in collaboration with us. And you know, the best collaborations we've got with some of our partners are all initiated by customers saying, hey, I want you 
to go and get Ansible content. So, so the customers are driving a lot of the, yep. the behavior of the, in, the, in the ecosystem. Yep. Correct. On the, um, just another point, we've been hearing a lot on the security side, separate sector, but cybersecurity, a lot of customers are building teams internally, dev teams, mm -hmm. building their own stacks and then telling the suppliers, hey, support my APIs. So now you start to see more of an API integration point. Is that something that is going to be something that you guys are going to be doubling down on? Yep. What's the, what's the approach there? How does a partner connect and scale with the customers? So is we've been, uh, so Ansible Security Automation, which is automation connecting, IPS, EPS, that kind of stuff. Um, it is almost a replay of what we did in the network automation space. So we saw a need in the network automation space. We filled it, we became a catalyst in the community with our partners and our customers and our, and our contributors. And after about three years now, Ansible Network Automation is a huge piece of our business and adoption curve. We're doing the exact, we see the exact same thing in the security automation space. Set compliance aside over here, we're talking about kind of automating the connections between your firewalls, your threat detection systems, and all that kind of stuff. So we're working with a set of partners, whether it's Cisco, whether it's Palo Alto, whether it's, um, whether it's resilient, IBM's resilient, and being able to connect and automate the connections between the threat and the response, and, and, and all of that kind of the stuff. The same trajectory as the network automation. It's the exact same trajectory. We're just running the same play, and it's working out great. We're, now we're on that kind of early part of that curve, that adoption curve, and we have partners jumping in with us. Yeah, um, if you're talking to customers, we've heard certain stories, you know, how I got, you know, a thousand hours of work down to a dozen hours of work there. Is there anything built into the tool today that allows them to kind of generate those, those hero stats uh, or uh, any, anything along those lines? Talk about analytics maybe. I mean, from, yeah, so what, again, without any analytics side on, I mean, those things start to become possible and one of the things we've, we've been doing is, is turning on more, more metrics and it's, it's actually really about mining the data for the customer because Tower gives this you know, great focal point for all the automation that's going on. It's somewhere that everything comes through. So when we export that, and then we can, we can do that work for all the customers, rather than having to do it all themselves, um, then you start to build up those pictures. And we've started with a few different areas, but as we advance with those and start to see how people use them, and start having that conversation with customers about what data they want to use and how they want to use it, I think that's going to be very possible. Uh, you know, it, and it, it's, it's so important, it's, it, yeah. I think it was laid out here nicely that automation goes from a tactical uh, solution to more strategic, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, but more and more how customers can leverage that data and be data driven, that's, that's going to drive them forward. Any, any good customer examples you have of the outcomes? Uh, I know you're talking to a lot RBS of them. RBS one from this morning. <laughs> yeah, so I mean RBS up, up this morning, and I think that the numbers they used in the, in the demo, that she's like, you know, last year they did 100,000, you know, from launch to the end of the year, did thousand changes through their platform. And this year so far they've done a million. So and that, you know, from my recollection, that's about the same time frame on either side of the, the year. So that's a pretty impressive acceleration side of things. We've had other ones where people have said, you know, how many times, you know, we, we talked to some customers yesterday, um, what used to take eight hours to do a DR test with 20 or 30 people in for the weekend now takes 12 minutes for two people and they're basically just pushing a few buttons just as they go through and confirm everything's worked. You know, that, that type of, you can't get away from that type of change. The JP Morgan example yesterday was pretty compelling. Mm. I mean, the time savings and, yeah. I mean people are, I mean this legit time, I mean people are talking serious order of magnitude time savings. Yeah. Um, so that's awesome. The thing I want to ask you guys next is we're seeing another pattern in the, in the market where amongst your customer base where it's the same problem being automated across uh, all over the place. So playbooks become kind of key. As uh, that starts to happen, is that where the insights kind of comes in? Can you kind of help us kind of tie that together? Because if I'm a large enterprise, whether it's I'm decentralized or centralized, however I'm organized, mm -hmm. I'm getting more gear, I'm getting more cloud, <laughs> I'm getting more operations. There's right. more surface area of stuff and certainly 5G, IOTs coming around the corner, you yeah. mentioned security. All this is expanding. There'll be more touch points. Automation seems to be the killer app for this. Automating those mundane tasks, but also identifying new things. Mm. Right. Well, can you guys comment on that? Yeah, so maybe I'll start, Rich, and you can yeah. jump in, which is a little bit around, uh, particularly in those large accounts, where you have these different disparate teams taking a approach to automate something using Ansible, and then being able to repeat or reuse that somewhere else in the organization. So that idea of being, for them to be able to curate their automation content that they've created. Maybe they've pulled something down from Galaxy, maybe they've got something from our automation hub and they've made it their own. And now they want to curate that and spread it across their organization to either 
obviously uh, become more efficient, but also enforce standards. That's where Automation Hub is going to come into, into play here. Not only will it be a repo for uh, certified content from us and our partners, but it will also be an opportunity for them to curate their own content and share it across their organization. Yeah, and I think when you tie those two things together and you've got that, you know, I, so I call it discoverability, so how do I go and find what I want? And then the next day, you know, the next day after, after you've run the automation, you've then got the analysis, you say, well, who's, who's using the right corporate approved roles? Who's using uh, the same set of roles from the team that builds the standards to make sure you've yeah. got a compliant build? You know, sh again, showing the demo, the sysadmin has his way of doing it, puts the security baseline application on top, and you go, well, okay, who's running that security baseline continuously every time? So you can both imp yeah. imp impose the, the security standards in the way the build works, but you can also validate that everybody's actually doing the security standards. You know what I find fascinating about what you guys are doing, and I think this is, came out clearly yesterday, and you guys are talking about it um, in some of the community conversations, is there's a social construct here going on. There's a, there's a cultural shift where the benefits that you guys are throwing off with the automation is creating a network effect within the companies. So it's not just having a Slack channel and tech, seeing if the servers are up or down. It's much more of a tighter bond between the, the stakeholders inside the companies because you have people from different geographies, you have champions driving change, mm -hmm. and there's some solidarity happening between the groups of people, yeah. whether they're siloed or decentralized, so there's a whole new social network, almost a cultural shift that's happening with the standardization of this substrate. Can you guys comment on this dynamic? Did you see this coming? Are you planning uh, for it? Are you doubling down on it? I, I think so, and, and we talk about community, right, and how important that is, but how do you create that community internally? And so Ansible's like the catalyst. So, you know, most of the teams don't necessarily need to understand in their current day jobs, Git and all the DevOps, uh, focus tools or the next generation. Um, but then you bring Ansible because they want to automate and suddenly they go, okay, now I need to understand source control, I need to understand versioning, I need to understand how to do git pulls and pull requests and this and so on and so forth. And it, it changes, that provides the sort of the catalyst for them to focus on what change they have to make about how they work because what they wanted to do was something that requires them to do you know, good disciplines and good behaviors that previously there was no motivation or need to do. I think Bart from Microsoft hit on that yesterday. I don't know if you saw Bart's session, but their network engineer is having to get familiar with concepts of using automation almost like software development life cycles, right? And starting to manage those things in repos and think of it that way, which is intimidating at first for people who are not used to that. But once they're over that kind of hump and understand that the Ansible language itself is simple and an operations person, an admin can use it, no problem. He yeah. said it himself, didn't he? They, my network engineers have become network developers. Yeah, right. yeah it, it's funny. I've been watching and talking to a bunch of customers, they all have their you know, automation journey that yes. they're going through. And when I hear the gamification, I'm like, okay, what if I have certain levels I have to reach and it unlocks capabilities uh, you know, in the community along the way. Maybe that could build, a, build in the yeah, future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just, it's, maybe it's swag based. You know, if you get to well, a I mean, certain level, yeah, we'll yeah. send you some t-shirts. Yeah, <laughs> that's 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 a that's nice good. work environment when you're not talking about the servers down on some Slack channel when you're actually focusing on work. Yeah. yeah. So that, I mean, that's the shift, that's what I'm yeah. seeing. Going from firefighting to being able to do... <laughs> <laughs> or throwing <laughs> 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 bombs at each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Flame wars and on. Yeah. When yeah. I was going through this myself, and I used to talk to a lot of the different teams yeah. and the dev teams and the, the ops teams, and I used to say, it would be nice if, you, if these teams didn't have to talk to you to complain about something that hadn't worked or was misconfigured, or it was just like, I'd just like to talk to you because you're yeah. my friend or you're my colleague and I'd like to have a chat because everything's working because it's all automated so it's consistent and it's repeatable. That's a nice, you know, a nice way, it, ch it can change the way that people get to interact because it's no longer only phone me up when something's wrong. And I think that, that uh, adds an interesting dynamic to well, it. Well in our survey to our customer base in our community, the four things, one of the four things that came up was you know, happier employees because if they're getting stuff done and more efficient, mm. they have more time to actually self-actualize yeah. in their job. That yeah. becomes an interesting, it's not just a checkbox in some HR manual. And it's actually real impact. And I kind of think the customers who we've heard talk, the RBS gentleman this morning, James, a lot of the fear initially is, well, I automate myself out of a job. And what we've heard from everybody is that's not absolutely, yeah. that's not actually true at all. It just allows them to do higher value things in a more proactive heard that sort of way. Big data, yeah. I mean, that, the automation thing is ridiculous. Yeah. I, mean, I, find well, that my, I didn't use it yesterday, my little um, yeah. you know, joke comment with that is when I try to explain to my father what I do, 
And uh, he just said, well, in the 1970s, they said that computers would mean we'd all do a two-day week. <laughs> and that hasn't come true either, right? So that's <laughs> you can trade yeah. your beeper in for a phone, yeah. now you're yeah. on full of you know, chat bots. Yeah. <laughs> hasn't come true with Red Hat, by the way. Yeah. Tom, <laughs> Richard, thanks for coming on and yeah, sharing John, the insight. Thank thanks for thank unpacking you. the Ansible automation platform, some of the th features, and congratulations. Great to see the, the progress. Yep. Thank, thank you, John. Thank, thank you very much. We'll be following thanks. you guys. Great. So CUBE coverage here in Atlanta. I'm Jeff Horst, Stu Miniman. Stay with us for day two of CUBE coverage after this short break. <laughs>